न्यूज सर्विसेज डिविजन ऑफ ऑल इंडिया रेडियो प्रेजेंट मनी मैटर्स देश और लोगों के वित्त और अर्थव्यवस्था से जुड़ा कार्यक्रम अबाउट सेविंग्स इन्वेस्टमेंट्स बोरोइंग एंड टैक्सेशन हिंदी और इंग्लिश में सीधा प्रसारण ऑन आर डिजिटल प्लेटफॉर्म सुनना न भूले हर रोज शाम चार बजकर पाँच मिनट ऐसी चार तीस तक मनी मैटर्स Hello good afternoon and welcome to Money Matters our new show dedicated to all things to do with personal finance you're listening to this on an official all india radio news youtube channel and other digital platforms money matters is an interactive show where you also can participate you can do that simply by typing your comments in the live chat section or you can send us an email on moneymatters.air@gmail.com we announce the topic of the show one day in advance so that you can send in your questions in advance our topic for today is basics of mutual fund i am veeravi kumar and with me is my co anchor in hindi vishal sharma नमस्कार मनी मेटर्स में आप सभी का स्वागत देश और लोगों की वित्त और अर्थव्यवस्था से जुड़े इस कार्यक्रम में आर्थिक खबरें आप तक लाने के अलावा हम प्रतिदिन एक निर्धारित विषय पर अपनी चर्चा केंद्रित करते हैं और आज का विषय है बेसिक्स ऑफ म्यूचुअल फंड जैसा कि रवि ने बताया यानी म्यूचुअल फंड से जुड़ी बुनियादी बातें श्रोताओं इस कार्यक्रम में हम आपके सवाल भी शामिल करते हैं सवाल भेजने के लिए हमारा ई मेल इसके अलावा YouTube चैनल में कमेंट सेक्शन में जाकर भी आप अपना सवाल हम भेज सकते हैं आज के कार्यक्रम में हमारे साथ चर्चा के लिए आमंत्रित हैं वरिष्ठ आर्थिक विश्लेषक यामिनी अग्रवाल यामिनी नमस्कार कार्यक्रम में आपका स्वागत धन्यवाद और अब आज की आर्थिक खबरों के साथ हैं वी रवि कुमार आफ्टर हिटिंग रिकॉर्ड हाइज लास्ट वीक एक्विटी बेंच मार्क्स टूडे क्लोज विद मार्जिनल लॉसेज सेंसेक्स एंड निफ्टी बोथ लॉस्ट अराउंड जीरो पॉइंट वन परसेंट अमेड मिक्स क्यूज फ्रॉम ग्लोबल मार्केट Sensex at the Bombay Stock Exchange fell 39 points to close at 41,643. Nifty at the National Stock Exchange also slipped nine points to settle at 12,263. The rupee at the forex market also weakened marginally by two paise to 71 rupees and 14 paise in late afternoon deals. Gold prices soared 187 rupees to 39,053 rupees per 10 grams in the national capital. Silver also jumped 495 rupees. to 46499 rupees per kilogram jamini let's begin our discussion by looking at we are calling it the basics of mutual fund so let's go back to the basic of the basic so most people walk up to us and say that sir koi mutual fund bataiye and they think it of it almost like a commodity so many people don't understand the risks associated with so if i have to use a metaphor or explain it simply what is a mutual fund Uh, well when we talk about a mutual fund it's basically um, different uh, money from the different investors which are pooled together in a corpus and uh, the S- uh, spv which is a special purpose vehicle basically invests this particular money into uh, the equities or the debt markets or the money market uh, instruments that is there and there's a portfolio manager who actually manages the investments into these different uh, securities that are there so uh, what what you're saying is that the first concept that is very important to understand is that a mutual fund requires people to pool money and so let's say vishal and i uh, uh, alone cannot buy let's say the share of mrf which is currently trading at 63000 we both are quite poor and we both decide to bring in money together and both pool in money and both put in around 35000 each now we are in a position to buy one share of mrf so first concept is you're saying that we pool the money second concept very important point that you raised is that mutual fund is not a category by itself mutual fund is just the vehicle uh, spv as the word you used and then you have to decide what is the investment objective do you want to go into equity you want to go into debt or you want to go into money market so are these the only three options or are there other options in mutual funds well you can actually bring about the investment plan as per the uh, investment objective which the mutual funds have so you are basically investing into securities market you can invest into commodities and other markets which have been permitted lately uh, for the mutual funds so you can actually bring about investments into these through the mutual funds 
So conceptually, you can also have probably a gold mutual fund, you can have a real estate mutual fund or commodities as you mentioned. But in India currently, we largely stick to the equities, debt and uh, the short term money market kind of yes, a thing. Yes, presently we are sticking to the equity, uh, uh, debt and the money market mutual funds. But they have been also permitted to get, enter into the commodities market. So the most important thing for a person to decide is not that he has to buy a mutual fund. The most important thing for him to decide is what is the asset class that he gets into, whether he wants to get into equity or debt or money markets. The most important thing for anybody before he plans to invest in a mutual fund is to decide what is his goal, whether he wants to be a long term investor, whether he wants to be a short term investor, what kind of a return versus a risk is he willing to take? Is he willing to take a high risk? Is he willing to take a low risk? Does he want a stable return or does he want a high return which is there? Based upon his age, based upon his goal, based upon his risk uh, averseness in terms of taking risk in the markets, he can then choose a uh, mutual fund which has a particular investment objective which will outline as to where the mutual fund or the portfolio manager will invest the major portion of the mutual fund in different securities. So if you actually are investing about above 65% in uh, equity, it automatically becomes an equity oriented mutual fund. If you are investing most of your funds in fixed income securities like debt, corporate debts, government securities and others, then it becomes a debt fund. And if you're investing in money market instruments, then it becomes a money market mutual fund. If you invest in equity and debt, then it becomes a balanced mutual fund. So depending upon what where you're investing and for how long you're investing and whether you allow investors to invest after the scheme has uh, opened or not, that defines the overall uh, complexion of the mutual fund. तो कुल मिलाकर आपके नजरिए से कि निवेश का लक्ष्य जो है वो वो आपका निर्धारित करता है कि आपको किस म्यूचुअल फंड में जाना है किस तरीके के म्यूचुअल फंड में आपको इन्वेस्ट करना है तो म्यूचुअल फंड में जब हम इन्वेस्ट करने की बात करते हैं तो दो तरह के मेनली जो शुरुआती जो हमें सामने आते हैं वो होते हैं ओपन एंडेड फंड और क्लोज एंडेड फंड इनके बारे में बताइए कि ये क्या है जी ओपन एंडेड फंड्स और क्लोज एंडेड फंड्स म्यूचुअल फंड्स की स्कीम्स होती हैं जिसके अंदर आप जो इनिशियल पब्लिक ऑफर आता है आपका म्यूचुअल फंड स्कीम का जिसके जो डिफाइन करता है कि वो स्कीम क्या है और कहाँ इन्वेस्ट करेगी उसके तहत आप जब एक क्लोज एंडेड फंड में इन्वेस्ट करते हैं तो आप बार बार एंटर और एग्जिट नहीं कर सकते एक ओपन एंडेड म्यूचुअल फंड में आप स्कीम खत्म होने के बाद भी एंट्री और एग्जिट कर सकते हैं ओपन एंडेड फंड में आपको अलाउड होता है कि आप जिस समय एंटर करना चाहते हैं एंटर करके लिक्विडिटी अपने पास रख सकते हैं और जब आप एग्जिट करना चाहते हैं वो भी कर सकते हैं क्लोज एंडेड फंड्स के जो रिटर्न्स होते हैं वो ज़्यादातर बेहतर होते हैं पर लिक्विडिटी प्रोवाइड नहीं करते इन्वेस्टर्स को और यहाँ जब हम बात करें तो न्यू फंड ऑफर्स भी होते हैं ये एन में निवेश करना कितना समझदारी भरा निर्णय हो सकता है डिफरेंट म्यूचुअल फंड ए एम सीज जिन्हें हम कहते हैं एसेट मैनेजमेंट कंपनीज म्यूचुअल फंड स्कीम्स लाती हैं एन एफ ओज जिन्हें हम कहते हैं और इन न्यू फंड ऑफर्स के तहत वो अपनी स्कीम को डिस्क्राइब करती हैं कि वो कैसे इन्वेस्ट करेंगे कितने टाइम के लिए करेंगे और कितने रिटर्न ऑफर करने की रखते हैं कोशिश तो उसके तहत आप इन न्यू फंड ऑफर्स के अंदर इन्वेस्ट कर सकते हैं और एक पर्टिकुलर रेट पर जो आपको मिलता है एन ए वी उसके ऊपर आप इन्वेस्ट कर पाएंगे so i would look at the one product that's probably the most common in india that's fixed deposits so i uh, have all my life invested in fixed deposits so has my father and i have heard about mutual funds why should i invest in mutual funds well when we talk about fixed deposits fixed deposits give you a certain specific uh, return which is uh, guaranteed by the uh, bank which says that for a particular period from 3 months to 6 months to 1 year to 2 years or whatever is the amount of fd you're making you will get that particular return usually the fixed deposit um, tends to give this particular return which is safe and which is considered that it will be uh, continuous stable but is usually lower than the market return which the mutual funds offer if you look at the uh, stock market is stock markets have been continuously growing in terms of their market capitalization so, so le- le- let me let me interrupt you there yamini the word that i heard you saying was market returns so we hear this thing in any mutual fund ad is mutual funds are subject to market risks so what are these market risks i'm again using the same construct of trying to understand this through the prism of fixed deposits so fixed deposits you say give us a fixed return give us a reasonably safe return 
and here we are subject to market risk so what are these market so risks so when you talk about a mutual fund what it does is it takes money from you and it invests into the stock market so it invests when it invests into the stock markets uh, it buys securities and its overall value is depend is is called is dependent upon what we call as the net, net asset value which is determined by the price at which the share is trading for which you have bought uh, which you have bought in by the mutual fund so as the stock prices go up the nvs also go up as the stock prices go down the nvs also go down so you can lose the entire bit of money if the portfolio manager has invested into particular equities uh, which are actually uh, losing money day by day and you can also gain money as and when the securities in which he has invested continue to gain money so when we say they are into uh, they are subject to market risk we are basically saying that the securities continue to increase and decrease based upon the market demand and supply of these particular securities and they cannot uh, ascertain you the amount of return which will be given to you as is ascertained in the fixed deposit so let's say i invested 100 rupees today into a mutual fund whether it is a debt equity or uh, money market or any other category of mutual funds is it possible that over the next one year or probably in a shorter term i could lose 20% or even 50% of that money yes you can actually lose money on this mutual funds so that's what market risk uh, that means would mean too. but it also risk. means that i could probably gain 20% and yes. that again is what market it risk it means let's say if you invested 100 rupees and the stock where you invested goes up higher uh, let's say it becomes 120 you gain that 20 rupees over there however if the stock goes 80 you automatically lose that 20 over there so if i'm not comfortable with this risk i'm typically not comfortable i want okay even if i get 4% i want that 4% to be certain and sure then would you recommend that i still look at uh, uh, mutual funds yeah you have fixed income security mutual funds in which you can invest which are debt securities which are uh, which largely if if they are investing into government securities they would give a specified amount of return uh, corporate bonds are also of a safer uh, bet if they are invested in the right credit rated uh, corporate debt which is there तो अगर ज़्यादा रिटर्न है तो थोड़ा बहुत जोखिम भी उसके साथ जुड़ा हुआ है और बात यहाँ पर एक ये भी आती है कि क्या म्यूचुअल फंड्स में इन्वेस्ट करके क्या हम टैक्स की बचत कर सकते हैं किसी तरीके से जी आप ए के तहत अगर आप ई में इन्वेस्ट करते हैं तो आपको ए के तहत एक लाख पचास हज़ार तक की आप टैक्स एग्जामेशन ले सकते हैं और बाकी जब आप एग्जिट करते हैं म्यूचुअल फंड से तो आपको लॉन्ग टर्म कैपिटल गेन्स पे करना होता है जो डिविडेंड डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन म्यूचुअल फंड करेंगे तो म्यूचुअल फंड हाउसेज उसके ऊपर डिविडेंड टैक्स पे करते हैं सो नाउ वी लुक एट द्लासिफिकेशन से बी इन अक्टूबर सिक्स 2017 actually classified mutual fund into 36 categories so broadly they are equity debt hybrid solution oriented and other schemes we we'll leave out solution oriented and other schemes for the purpose of this discussion so we are looking at equity debt and hybrid so when we spoke about that market risk how would you uh, grade these risks in these three categories so equity debt and hybrid hybrid of course is a mix of equity and debt so which one would be the highest risk which one would be medium risk which one would be no risk if that is possible well uh, when we say um, you know when you talk about mutual funds and you are investing into market securities the question of no risk doesn't arise because there is not a specific return that they can promise or assure you one needs to remember that Be, uh, only when you are investing in government securities which uh, i don't think any mutual fund specifically only invests in government securities they invest in government securities and corporate bonds that are there so uh, when you invest in um, equities that is the highest risk which is there then comes the hybrid and then comes the debt debt are usually have are fixed income securities because they promise a coupon rate on each security that you have bought so that gives you a certain amount of insurance that that much amount of return you will get and since they invest in some part of the government securities that there is that is always called a risk free rate of return which is always assured so let's bring in this uh, entire discussion to a practical construct here we have a question from one of our uh, listeners sai prasad chavan has written in and he is asking I'm I have invested in mutual funds SIP around 20000 rupees later I found that that is Sai Prasad found that mutual funds are less profitable than stocks is that right that's his question and he's also asking another question 
is there compound interest in SIP? So we'll come to this SIP later because that's a topic of discussion by itself. So let's first look at the first part of the question that are mutual funds less profitable than stocks? One cannot say that mutual funds are less profitable than stocks or not. Mutual funds give you an option of having a portfolio manager managing your investments for investing in the uh, securities markets, whether it is bonds, equities, and managing your funds in such a manner that the net asset value gains value. However, he is a mutual fund uh, portfolio manager and he cannot guarantee you as to how and uh, the manner in which the market would behave, whether it would go up or whether it would go down. If the market goes up, up, it would add on to your net asset value. If it goes down, it lowers down your asset value. Just like the stock, if it goes up, it gives you more returns. If it goes down, it go gives you lesser value. How, if you invest in the right stocks, you can get better values. If you invest in the right mutual funds, you can get better NAVs for yourself. You are tuned in to Money Matters on our official YouTube channel. We'll be back and discuss about SIPs right after this break. <laughs> Welcome back to Money Matters. Uh, Yamini, we were talking about SIP as being uh, part of the uh, question. Uh, we were talking about SIPs as being part of the question that Sai Prasad had asked. And that was uh, that brings to me, me to an, uh, another part that uh, an expert had once mentioned as a part of a question was that uh, uh, he said, tell me the name of a mutual fund. So the expert told him the name of the mutual fund. And then he said, now tell me an SIP also. So let me link that particular anecdote to this question that Sai Prasad has asked, is there compound interest in SIPs in mutual funds? Okay, so first of all, what is an SIP? SIP is a systematic investment plan whereby you actually, uh, as the word suggests, you systematically plan your investments by making small amount of investments into a particular financial instrument. And that financial instrument can be a mutual fund, an insurance, or even in the stock markets. Or even post office instruments. Even post office instruments, even your fixed deposits that are there. Whereby, let's say you've got whatever a monthly income you're getting and you might want to debit a certain certain amount of money for your uh, mutual fund or for your insurance or for your uh, let's say stock market investment or anything that you might would like to buy let's say even um, a consumable good that you want to buy systematic investment plan basically means that so it's not specific to a mutual fund but uh, for the benefit of the investors since the mutual fund idea is to pool resources and then to make investments it, it should reach to the as many people as it can and for uh, people who have lesser uh, investment capability, they can actually invest in the stock markets through the SIPs by even making small amount of contributions like 500 rupees out of their salaries and may and can participate in the growth that has been seen in the stock markets or in the stock mar uh, securities markets that are there. जी कार्यक्रम में आगे बढ़ने से पहले हम आपको बताते चलें कि मनी मैटर्स कार्यक्रम में हम आपके सवाल भी शामिल करते हैं सवाल भेजने के लिए हमारा ईमेल आईडी हम एक बार फिर बता देते हैं आपको मनी मैटर्स डॉट ए आई आर एट जी मेल डॉट कॉम कल के कार्यक्रम का हमारा विषय है प्रधानमंत्री जनधन योजना इस विषय पर अगर आप कोई भी जानकारी चाहते हो तो अपने सवाल हमें भेज सकते हैं आपके सवालों को हम कार्यक्रम में अवश्य शामिल करेंगे वापस लौटते हैं आज की चर्चा पर म्यूचुअल फंड्स बेसिक्स के बारे में और इतनी बात हो गई कि हमने तरह तरह के म्यूचुअल फंड्स के बारे में बात करी लेकिन म्यूचुअल फंड में इन्वेस्ट कैसे किया जाए शुरुआत कैसे कर सकता है एक आम निवेशक म्यूचुअल फंड में निवेश जी आप ऑफलाइन में इन्वेस्टमेंट्स कर सकते हैं ऑनलाइन भी इन्वेस्टमेंट्स कर सकते हैं आपके आप आ, किसी भी इन्वेस्टर सर्विस पॉइंट सेंटर पे जा सकते हैं जिसके अंदर आप एक म्यूचुअल फंड में इन्वेस्ट कर सकते हैं आप एक रजिस्ट्रेशन रिक्वेस्ट फॉर्म में सबमिट करके ऑफलाइन एक ए को दे सकते हैं ये म्यूचुअल फंड डिस्ट्रीब्यूटर को दे सकते हैं और वो आपके लिए स्कीम खरीद सकता है सिमिलरली आप ऑनलाइन में म्यूचुअल फंड्स के अंदर जाकर के उनकी वेबसाइट्स पे जाकर के आप इन्वेस्टमेंट्स कर सकते हैं क्या सॉरी अगर हम ये देखें तो क्या हम डायरेक्ट म्यूचुअल फंड कंपनी में जाकर भी म्यूचुअल फंड्स खरीद सकते हैं आप म्यूचुअल फंड्स डायरेक्टली ऑनलाइन भी खरीद सकते हैं और इससे इसके क्या फायदे हैं ऑनलाइन खरीदने के जी ऑनलाइन खरीदने का यही फायदा है कि आप आ, किसी भी स्पेसिफिक डिस्ट्रीब्यूटर के थ्रू नहीं जा रहे हैं और आप एक डायरेक्ट अपना म्यूचुअल फंड जो आप खरीदना चाहते हैं वो खरीद सकते हैं कुछ बैंक ये फैसिलिटी भी देते हैं जिसके अंदर आपके अकाउंट के साथ आप म्यूचुअल फंड खरीद सकते हैं और बेच सकते हैं और डायरेक्टली जो आप परचेज करेंगे वो आपके अकाउंट से डेबिट हो जाएगा और 
पैसे ही रिडीम करेंगे वो आपके अकाउंट में पैसा वापस आ जाएगा और जो डिविडेंड्स हैं वो भी डायरेक्टली आपके बैंक अकाउंट में आ जाएंगे और आपको के की रिक्वायरमेंट्स उतनी कंप्लीट नहीं करनी होती के की जो रिक्वायरमेंट्स हैं आपको ऑफलाइन फॉर्म में कंप्लीट करनी होती है क्योंकि आपका बैंक अकाउंट ऑलरेडी के रिक्वायरमेंट्स कंप्लीट करके रखता है उनके थ्रू आप जब ऑनलाइन खरीदते हैं तो आपको आसान पड़ता है ऑनलाइन जब हम खरीदते हैं तो क्या तब हम डिस्ट्रीब्यूटर को जो एक हिस्सा जाता है हमारे कमीशन की बात जो आप करते हैं वो भी हम बचाते हैं हाँ जी हम वो भी बचाते हैं so uh, yamini let's just close the discussion about that uh, compound interest compound interest basically refers to getting interest on interest yes. that is not very relevant in mutual funds because as we discussed right at the beginning it's subject to market risk so if i lose 10% of my capital in the first year there's no point discussing interest on interest because i lost 10% it is possible the concept of compound interest is possible only when i have a systematic rise even if it is 2% so 2% on 1 102% on 104% that's how it works so it's not relevant to this concept of course if you assume that you're getting a regular let's say even a 7 8% increase every year it does compound is that correct so when we talk about a mutual fund we are talking about returns in terms of the dividends and capital appreciation that is there so when a mutual fund a portfolio manager really buys and sells the units and makes a certain amount of money he distributes the uh, profits from the particular mutual funds to the investors which we receive in the form of dividends and he pays a tax on that uh, when you actually redeem your uh, mutual funds at a nav you actually uh, have capital gains in case the navs are higher from on the uh, price at which you had bought it so you basically have the concept of dividend payments a uh, dividend uh, money and you have the concept of capital appreciation and there is no particular fixed interest which is paid in the mutual fund so the question of a simple interest or a compound interest really does not come into the picture so there's another topic which is a topic of uh, hot discussion these days is direct plan versus what we call as regular plan so if i go for a regular plan i'm basically going through a bank or through a broker or through a distributor where where in some amount generally typically it will range from between 50 basis points to 100 basis points extra would be charged to the customer because you have gone through that route and the other mean means is what you call as direct so if i want to go for the direct and save that 100 basis points or 50 basis points how do i know that this is direct Uh, well, we make an online payments which are there, and that is how we actually plan about the direct plan that is there, as against the bank which we are likely to uh, plan it through or through an asset uh, uh, management company that is there. And also, I mean, the scheme and, scheme uh, name would mention that it is. The scheme name will also mention, and uh, when you get your statement, that will also give you an idea that it is a direct plan or there has been a charge that has been put on it. Yes, I mean, here is a question that is how to choose the best mutual fund. What parameters? होने चाहिए एक अच्छा म्यूचुअल फंड चाहिए एंड लेट मी ऐड टू दैट इज देयर समथिंग कॉल्ड द बेस्ट म्यूचुअल फंड Uh, well uh, a mutual fund is depend a choice of a mutual fund is completely dependent upon your goals your risk profile and uh, in 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 what kind of a period are you wanting to get your returns so when you look at a mutual fund first of all define your goals define your risk profile and then enter into a mutual fund so there is no best particular or one particular mutual fund which suits everybody uh, a different mutual funds will suit different people but there are benchmarks against which all mutual funds define their returns which can which is usually given in their statement or uh, or uh, in their uh, policy uh, the document which they actually bring out uh, in their schemes which are there which will indicate that the particular return is higher or lower than their peer groups or the benchmarks that are there to ek aam niveshak jo shuruaati taur par mutual funds mein nivesh karna ja raha hai kya usko mutual fund company ka uh, jo wo jo particular fund hai uska pichle saalon ka pradarshan ko apne samne rakhna chahiye performance dekhni chahiye ki kiski performance kaisi Yes, his uh, the performance uh, जो म्यूचुअल uh, फंड की है वो सिर्फ पिछले सालों की नहीं उसके उस साल की भी और उसके जो पीयर ग्रुप्स हैं उसके साथ भी मेजर करके देखनी चाहिए कि वो कैसा परफॉर्म कर रहा है कितना एंट्री या एग्जिट लोड लगा रहा है और कितने टोटल एक्सपेंस रेशियो है और वो कितना उसको फायदा पहुंचेगा और यहाँ पर फंड मैनेजर का जो एक रोल होता है वो बहुत महत्वपूर्ण होता है किसी भी फंड में उसके फंड मैनेजर के बारे में भी क्या कुछ जानकारी करनी चाहिए कि का इस का इस फंड के मैनेजर जी बिल्कुल जैसे एसेट मैनेजमेंट कंपनी है कौन सी मैनेजमेंट कंपनी है और वो क्या प्रोसीजर अडोप्ट करती है ये जरूरी है जानना म्यूचुअल फंड की इन्वेस्टमेंट के लिए 
Or we will, of course, uh, one program is too too little to discuss mutual funds in depth. So we will continue discussing mutual funds in greater depth. As we said, there are 36 kinds of mutual funds. We'll continue discussing that. But thank you today, Yamini, for a wonderful opening discussion on mutual funds. I hope a lot of our listeners have got the basic concepts clear now. And uh, if you miss some part of this, you can watch this show again on our uh, YouTube channel. And you can find a lot of information about mutual funds on amphiindia.com. And to remind you, as Vishal mentioned earlier, the topic for tomorrow's show is Pradhan Mantri Janadhan Yojana. And do send in your questions on this topic in advance at moneymatters.air at gmail.com. If you Gee. like this show, please yeah. do hit the like button and do subscribe to our channel as well. Thank you, Yamini. Thank you, Vishal. Thank you. And that's a wrap on this edition of Money Matters. Namaskar. Namaskar.